Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Maria Marin, and today I will be presenting my ISM presentation. Um, this is a progress I've been doing since the beginning of the year, and my topic is music therapy. I will be doing this presentation in English and Spanish. Um, so yeah, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> How are you doing tonight? Good. Good. Awesome. So we're gonna start. Um, okay. So a little bit about me. I am from Colombia. I've been here for five years. Um, my hobbies are music. I play and listen to music a lot. And this is my family. Um, there's a picture of me, my mom and my dad, and there's my dog and my little hamster. Um, these are my quotes, so it is possible to fail in many ways, while to succeed is possible in one way. Um, this relates to my topic because there's a lot of times where patients don't want to cooperate um, for the sessions, and would you say that it's a fail, but it's actually not a fail because you actually get to improvise and it's a lot more fun whenever you get to improvise, because you get to know the person, the patient a little bit better, and you get to know what they like, and the things they're comfortable, they're comfortable with. Um, and the other quote is, music can heal the wounds which medicine cannot touch. Um, this quote is really amazing because it just, as it says, it's, it explains how music can just heal a wound you have. For example, there's a lot of people with depression, so medicine can cure, I mean, music can cure that. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of times, medicine cannot cure some of the injuries or like the things you have. Okay, so what is music therapy? So basically what music therapy is, is a therapy with music or psychology with music. Um, it can be for all ages, especially, I wanna work especially with kids. So I will be playing around with them and just teaching them music. And also um, there's a lot of kids with depression and a lot of teenagers with suicide um, thoughts. And so I will be providing them instruments for them to play, for them uh, to express how they feel. Um, and so right here, it says that this kind of therapy engages the body and gets people moving. Um, and so I've heard that physical participation, it prevents depression because it keeps the person moving and it keeps the person kind of like unfocused from the depression. Um, so yeah, so I found this really cool image. I feel like it's really nice. It says all the um, things a, people, a person can have, and you can see there's many ways, and in all the ways there's music. Okay, so what inspired me? Um, since I was little, I've always have a passion for music. I've always liked to play around with instruments. I remember when I was little, I used to sit in the kitchen um, and I used to play around with the pens and all the things I could find. Um, and I also realized that music is a language and many people use it for communication. For example, when I first came to the United States, um, my basic English that I learned was by listening to music and so I used that little bit of English that I had, and I communicated with uh, the people around me and all my teachers. So what music therapists do? Um, what they do is that, for example, in a session, they will go in and analyze the environment the patient is in and how the patient is feeling, and so they will have the patient to sit 
um, next to them and just like get to know them, especially when it comes with kids. Um, they're kind of shy at first, and so you will have to approach them in a way that they don't feel comfortable, uncomfortable, or in a way they don't feel scared from you. Um, and you will just play music for them, just play music for relaxation, and then whenever they get your attention, you start trying to like get information from them, how, like asking their names, the age, how they're feeling, and then you will have them playing an instrument to express how they feel. And depend, depending on the tone, um, you will in, like in, interpret how they're feeling and if they're uncomfortable or not. So here's an example of a session and oh, um, and how it looks. So right here, he's working with an autistic patient. So he starts playing the drums. And as you can see, the kid does not like the way he's playing. And so he just starts screaming. And he offers the kid to play the drums, but he won't cooperate. So what he explained in the beginning was that he needed to improvise whenever the kid did that, because he didn't know that the kid was going to was not gonna like the session. So he started improvising and he started playing around with uh, sounds and just like making sounds with the body, as you can see. So right now the kid is kind of cooperating, but he's still hesitating. As you can see over here, he's teaching the kid how to say more by doing this, since the kid is not able to speak real, really well. And so he starts playing with the kid and starts playing, explaining that whenever the kid does this, it means that he wants more. So whenever the kid will do it, he starts playing the instruments. And if the kid won't do it, he will just stop. So I don't know if you guys can hear, but the kid at the end starts saying more, and instead of saying the sign, he starts like actually speaking, and that was a successful um, session. So going back to the thing. Okay. So. I learned the music therapy. Um, it was a big impact for World War II. It helped a lot of veterans coming from war because they had a lot of traumas. And for example, one of them said uh, in an interview that whenever they were, you know, on action, uh, whenever he looked around, all his friends they were just dead, and it was just like so traumatic for him. And so whenever they came back. Uh, the doctors started analyzing the kind of like how they were and how they came back from war and they realized that they had a lot of depression and traumas and they just wanted them to like feel a little bit free and not giving them like chem chemicals and all that stuff. And so uh, they started trying music and as you can see in the picture, there's kind of like a band, and all of them are veterans, and the majority of them said that music therapy actually cured them. Of course, they're gonna have the trauma from the past and all that, but it's not as much as they used to have it. Um, uh, and also, music therapy started in New Orleans, so that was new. Okay, so. Music therapy also helps with people with depression, anxiety, and sleep disorders. Um, as you may or may not may not know, um, music has this um, dopamine, dopamine. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, and it's basically like an effect, and it calms people down, uh, depending 
on the melody and the harmony. And it just like, it slowed down the heart rate and other body functions. Speech impediment. A lot of kids in middle school or elementary school, um, since they're new, they don't really know how to communicate with other, like other people or like uh, friends. And so usually uh, they have speech impediment um, and music just helps them to like find a way to communicate. Uh, for example, if you will if you will have a kid in a room, you will teach them how to like say words within music or like you will teach them sounds or will teach them um, a music lyrics and they will repeat and repeat and they will be learning the song. That way they can learn how to speak and how to like say words properly. And they can also like, for example, if this is a sound for, for saying like, I want more, the kid will understand that, for example, if the teacher says this, the kid will understand that the teacher wants more. Okay, so music therapy for cancer. Um, a lot of can cancer patients, they need to go through chemotherapy, which is a really painful um, process for uh, curing cancer. And so a lot of people get depression from it. And there is some people that they don't really have, they have like a limited time to live. And so they get in a depression and they just wanna like end their life, they just wanna die. And so music helps them uh, with this because as I told you, music has an effect of dopamine. Uh, which calms them down and also um, the chemotherapy is not a lot of people fr that has cancer they have said that music has helped them uh, to overcome the chemotherapy like the levels of pain because it kind of relaxes them and it's just it's just like let them forget that they're actually in pain and it's kind of like a, they kind of change their mind and they're more open-minded about how life is and how they see life from a different perspective. So colleges. Um, my plans for the future, I wanna go to Cullen College first. I wanna finish all my basics and then transfer in to Texas Women University. They have a really big program for music therapy and also my mentor is, she graduated from Texas Women University. Um, and also this way is a lot cheaper because I won't, I won't be paying the whole entire like um, thing at Texas Women University. I would just pay for the career itself. So my interview. So um, in this year I had four interviews in total the first one was with Miss Palmer. She's a music therapist and she works at a school with kids with autism and anxiety. And she also works as an independent music therapist. Um, my second one is Christina Stock. She works with cancer patients and she is now my mentor. Um, the third one is Rebecca Hinson. She works with a yes waiver and a couple class waiver. And the fourth one is Kristen Mates. She works with patients with eating disorders, uh, mainly with kids, teenagers, and adults. So this is my mentor. Her name is Christina Stock. She is a music therapy, a music therapist at the UNT, um, which is the University of Texas, but she works in the hospital setting. Um, and so this is her, this is her and her family. She has two kids. Um, she used to work with little kids, but now she works with adults. She tells me that kind of working with kids was really hard for her because you just get too attached to the patient. And for example, this kid can be good one day and then the next day they just die. Um, so it was really hard for her to kind of like accept that. And so instead, she started working with adults. And whenever 
we work with adults is a little bit different because we actually know the process and we actually know that at some point they're gonna die. Um, so yeah. Uh, and now she works. She used to work. She used to work with cancer patients, but now she works with post-COVID patients and their family. Um, as I told you, she always tells me to not get attached to the patient because it's really painful whenever you have to leave them. And she also tells me to apply counseling and psychology or to have a background or of counseling and psychology because you have to apply those in each session. And sometimes music therapy won't work for you in the future, so you can have a counseling and a psychology degree and you can be a counselor in a school or you can just be a psychologist. So my mentor meetings. Um, my mentor explained, explained to me what MTUB was and is where all the music therapists go, they get their degree there, uh, they get certified by them. And then she always tells me a bunch of stories. She, the majority of times that we meet, she always tells me a story from one of their patients. All of them end up with patients dying. Um, which is kind of good for me because I'm kind of preparing myself to see that in real life. And so she's also preparing me for me like to hear those kind of stories and kind of realize that this is happening in the real world. So yeah. Uh, so what she does, she is a music therapist and she works for um, the UNT hospital. And she also brought music therapy to her hospital. In the hospital that she started working at, they didn't know what music therapy was, and they just thought that it was basically like a clown in a kid's party, uh, but it's actually not. And so she started like, you know, doing meetings, presentations, and all of that to present what music therapy was, the effects music therapy has on patients, and the, Hospital didn't really know how it works, so they just put her for a um, part-time job. And after a couple months, they decided to keep her for a full-time job because the music therapy was actually helping the patients and actually making a progress for them. So yeah, um, and then we also have a project, and I will show you guys in a minute. So. The project me and my mentor were doing um, is a little bit simple because uh, since COVID is going on, I was supposed to be shadowing her um, at the hospital, but I couldn't go in because since she works now with post-COVID patients, um, it was really risky for me and it's also really risky for her. Um, and so I cannot, I couldn't do a big project with her. And also, I wanted to see the patients and the things she does to the patients, kind of like on pictures and like videos. But we have a privacy law, and especially a hospital, they cannot show the patients without any permission. Um, so that was kind of a little bit hard. But we ended up doing a flyer and a bro brochure for the patients and for the families, and so, I will be giving one flyer to the patients and the families to see how music therapy works and the effects music therapy has. And then I will give the other one to the staff members at the hospital, so the nurses, the doctors, etc. So this is the results. I will be giving you guys a little bit of a close up so you can see how it was. second one is the brochure. So the first one is gonna be, I will give them to the music, uh, I mean the staff at the hospital, so the doctors and the nurses. 
And the second one I will be giving to the patients and the family. Okay, so moving on. Um, agendas and schedules. Um, my mentor always tells me to never follow an agenda. There's always a case that, for example, you're doing something or you're having a free time and then you get a call and you need to rush to the hospital. So never follow an agenda. Also, I need to improvise because the patients won't cooperate. As you saw in the video, the patient didn't cooperate in the music therapy. Um, he needed to uh, improvise by making sounds within the body and the patient's body. Um, have different activities. Since the patients won't want to cooperate, you have to have at least five activities in total, especially when it comes with kids. They don't really want to do, they're kind of stubborn and they don't really want to do what you tell them. So you have to be a little bit of kind of like relax and just like take the session as a game, especially when it comes with kids. Um, always analyze the environment. Whenever you come in a room, you need to analyze the environment, the how the patient is doing, how the body language they're transmitting and all that stuff because you don't want to scare them or you don't want to make them uncomfortable. Uh, never live without finishing an activity. You always have to finish an activity. It doesn't matter if it takes five hours. You need to end the activity because the kid needs to leave the session with a progress and you have to kind of like write, write it down how the kid is doing and you have to keep a progress for the patient. Um, and as I told you, I need to get ready for sad stories and sad backgrounds. A lot of kids, they come in the room and one day they're, they're gonna be fine and then the other day they're just, just like not in this world anymore. And so I need to get used to that. Um, and so my goals. So I have three, three goals for life. Um, the first one is a short term, -term goal. Um, I really wanna start playing at least two more instruments. I wanna start playing at least uh, the drums or an electric guitar. Uh, my second goal is to become a music therapist and move to Asia in order to help children suffering from cancer, trauma, depression, anxiety, and mental health, health disorders. So you might be wondering why I, why I wanna move to Asia. So I've heard that in Asia they have a high rate of teenagers of suicide. And so there's a lot of teenagers who commit suicide and there's a lot of little kids with depression because as you may or may not know um, Asian parents they care more about the discipline a kid has than the love they want to give them and the oppression they want to give them and sometimes whenever the kid let's say the kid is really good at swimming and one day the kid w just wants to quit because he doesn't want anymore the parents start saying things like oh, I'm gonna disown you because you're not doing this and this is for the family and we have been doing this for decades. So that's why a lot of kids, uh, they end up moving out of the house, meeting new people and bad influences and they just kind of kill themselves or just get depression and they just do a lot of bad things. So this is the main reason I wanna move there. Um, and my other goal was that since I'm from Colombia and now I'm living here, I want to network with other music therapists all around the world within the US, Colombia, and Asia since I will be moving over there. Um, I want to have kind of like a program for me to kind of like travel around and take kids from Asia to travel to Colombia or take kids from Colombia to travel to the US or Asia and for them to meet new people and to get to know the culture and how everything works in every country.
And that is all for today. Um, do you guys have any questions? Thank you so much. Okay. Um, one moment. <laughs>